Hey, hey, Mama Bear, welcome back to another episode of the VBAC Podcast. Today, I wanted to share with you what you can do to avoid a repeat C-section. We're going to talk about the three tips that I have for you to control what you can and avoid another C-section. If you're planning a VBAC, I know that repeat cesarean is probably one of the top concerns you have. And while I think we all realize we cannot control everything about birth, there are some things we can control. So what decisions can you make? What things can you change today that can improve the chances of not having another C-section? Let's find out. Welcome to the VBAC Podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Zaki, and I am a licensed practical nurse, international board, certified lactation consultant, and birth doula. I'm also a mama to four little bears and a three-time VBAC mama. My mission is to help you cultivate confidence for a positive and peaceful VBAC. This is a disclaimer that any of the information, experiences, opinions, and stories told on this podcast are with the intention of inspiring, educating, and informing parents. This information is not intended to treat or diagnose any medical conditions. If you have questions, you must consult your provider. Jamie Zaki does not accept liability for any decisions that you make after listening to this podcast. Okay, so the first tip that I have for you to avoid a repeat C-section is finding a VBAC supportive provider. And that probably sounds really obvious, especially if you've been hanging out with me from the beginning, you've watched some of the early episodes, you know that I'm like, your provider makes the biggest difference in your outcome, how they manage you how they, I don't even like that term, how they manage you, but you you know what I mean. If they, if they think they need to manage you or if they see you as an equal, if they feel like you two are a team working together or they think they're the authority on you and your body and birth, if they are projecting a negative birth experience, maybe they attended a VBAC last week that didn't go so well. So now they're telling you that all these things are wrong with VBAC. And maybe the problem wasn't even that the mom had a VBAC or planned a VBAC, but it could have been just a thousand other things that are out of anybody's control. You need to find a VBAC supportive provider. What does that mean? What does that look like? It can be hard to tell. It can be hard to know if your provider is truly, truly supportive of VBAC. But there are some questions you can ask. You can ask them how they handle certain situations that you might be concerned about. You can ask what kind of guidelines or boundaries they set as their policies toward the end of pregnancy. And kind of based off their answers to that, you can usually tell if they are truly supportive of VBAC or not. Uh, There are really great providers out there and there are really bad ones. And early in a pregnancy, it really can be hard to tell the difference because sometimes they do just say what you want to hear. So just keep that in mind, but don't let that make you not trust your provider either. If you want to learn more about what questions to ask, I do have a list of questions on my blog at littlebearlactation.com. And there's like a five question list. It's like a very basic list. And then there is a whole like 20 question list inside of VBAC with confidence that goes deep into how to really put your provider to the test. Next, the number two tip for avoiding a repeat cesarean is learning the truth about VBAC so you can identify bad advice. It's fine if you ask all the questions, but you're going to get answers. And how do you know if those answers are fact fiction? How do you know if they're exaggerated, dramatized, or minimized? You need to learn the truth about VBAC. 
And that's what I'm here for. I am here to help you uncover that truth. I am help you here to help you identify bad advice. I am here to help you learn how to advocate for yourself and how to facilitate good, productive conversations with your provider. Um, I'm here to help you be fierce and fight back when you need to, but I don't want it to be a fight for you. I want to help you learn how to ask the right questions and then ask them again. So what I mean by that is, for example, if your provider tells you like, oh, well, I don't induce VBACs and you say, well, I would rather have an induction than a repeat C-section. So what options do I have? And if they say, well, I'm, we don't induce feedback, I'm sorry. You can say, well, why don't you induce feedback? I understand there is an increased risk. However, I am willing to accept that risk and would prefer a VBAC. What induction options do I have? And they say like, well, we don't induce VBAC. This could happen. That could happen. And they paint this really scary picture. I teach you how to come back with, okay, well, what about this option? What about that option? And we actually write your birth plan so that you're prepared for these situations. We have contingency on contingency on contingency. Honestly, that is the beauty of a birth plan. And I'll talk about that another day. But the beauty of your birth plan is actually being able to learn about all of your options in a deeper way. Hey, Mama Bear, real quick, before we continue with this episode, I wanted to ask how you're feeling about writing your VBAC birth plan. Are you struggling to write your birth plan because you feel like a birth plan is pointless since your last birth didn't go the way you wanted? Maybe you're struggling to know what the right choices even are for you, and harder yet is getting anyone to agree with you and support those choices. I know how frustrating and hopeless that can feel. Dare I even say, isolating? It's hard to prepare for your VBAC when you feel like you have to defend every decision you make. But there is a better way. After my three VBACs and supporting countless mama bears through their redemption birth, I realized that the secret to creating a VBAC birth plan that you feel confident about lies within the three pillars of confidence, womanly wisdom, self-advocacy, and surrender. When you learn how to strengthen each of these pillars, you can unlock the secret to a peaceful birth, no matter what unexpected curveballs birth brings. If you are ready to take the first step toward creating a confident birth plan, I am inviting you to join me inside the VBAC with Confidence Complete Birth Prep Program, where you will learn how to connect with your inner wise woman to trust your God-given intuition, develop fierce self-advocacy skills, and understand what it means to find freedom through surrender. The best part about VBAC with Confidence Complete Birth Prep Program is that you can set the pace. Maybe your husband works crazy hours and it feels impossible to take a class together. That's okay because you can binge learn together at 10 p.m. or 10 a.m. while eating ice cream in bed without pants on. If you're ready to wash away the fear surrounding your VBAC on your terms and start making decisions from a place of confidence, head over to littlebearlactation.com slash vbackwithconfidence247 right now. Don't waste another day letting fear write your birth story. Now, back to the show. Next, the third tip for how to avoid a repeat cesarean is continuous labor support. Studies have shown that women who have continuous labor support are less likely to have their birth end in a C-section. So these studies are usually used for um, the evidence for doulas to show that doulas actually reduce the incidence of cesarean birth. So if you are planning a VBAC and you're trying to avoid a C-section and that is your goal, I highly recommend having a good doula. I should do an episode on what to look for in your doula. Good idea, Jamie. Write that one down. But a good doula 
Or if a doula is not for you because it's just not in the budget or you just don't want an extra person in your space, you need to have a good daddy doula. Your husband needs to learn the stuff along with you. It can't just be you learning all these things because you can't communicate them to him during labor. So your birth partner, whoever that is, whether that's your husband or your mother or your sister, that birth partner needs to prepare themselves and get educated so that they too can learn how to question the provider, learn when to push back and when their recommendations might be worth listening to and heeding. Those are the three tips that I have for you today, Mama Bear. There are three really easy but difficult tips, right? Find a VBAC supportive provider. Figure out the questions to ask them. Decide if they are supportive. If they are not supportive, then you have decisions to make. Either you use that provider or you don't use that provider. You use that provider and you have to fight and you have to push and you have to advocate and hope for the best or you find a different provider. But I know that's not always an option. So step two is to know the truth about VBAC so you can identify bad advice and push back against it. And step three is to have continuous support who knows how to support you. I recommend a doula, but a doula is not for everybody. So then I recommend that your birth partner gets special training in how to support you. The truth is, most birth partners don't know how to support a woman in labor. Most hus- most husbands don't know what to do for their wife. They want to. They want to know what to do. They want to help, but they don't know how. It is not fair to put them in that situation thinking, well, they're a generally supportive person and assume that they'll know how to handle labor. That's not fair to them. It's also not fair to you. And even if you have a sister or a friend or a mom who has given birth once or twice and, you know, has seen it before, that doesn't mean that they're going to be good at helping you advocate, helping you get out of fear cycles, stay in safety cycles, and know when to push back, like I said before. So whoever your birth partner is going to be needs to get informed on VBAC also, needs to learn the truth about VBAC also. And that is why I have invited you to the VBAC with Confidence birth prep program. This birth prep program takes you through birth. It takes you through the mind work, the tactical decisions that you have to make about birth, how to change the plans when you need to, understanding comfort measure options, understanding what to expect in labor, preparing yourself for that. And then it has a whole deeper level going into the nuances of VBAC and having to advocate for your VBAC birth and some of the unique battles you might face that other moms don't face. If your mom or sister or whoever is supporting you during labor has never had a VBAC, then they definitely don't understand everything that comes along with it unless they have done a lot of learning, training, and diving into that because there, there's another layer. There's another layer of stress, worry, concern when you're planning a VBAC. You know that, I know that because we've been there. And that's what your birth partner needs to learn. So that's what you will learn inside VBAC with confidence. You will learn how to find a VBAC supportive provider, how to advocate for yourself and identify bad advice. And your birth partner will learn how to be a strong, strong support person for you. I pray that you have learned something new today. I hope that this episode gives you faith and confidence that you can avoid a repeat C-section with the right support and good knowledge. I hope that this episode gives you confidence that there are things you can control to help avoid a repeat C-section. The things you can't control, things like if you have a side effect to a medically necessary medication, if your baby is in a bad position and doesn't want to change no matter what you have done, if your baby has 
a medical emergency and requires immediate delivery, if you have a medical emergency and require immediate delivery, those are things you can't control. But there are things that you can control. And these are some of them. I hope this inspires you and you walk away from this feeling ready for your VBAC.